Only you can prevent wildfires. Smokey Bear. Hello, I am the Pop Mythologist, and welcome to This is the End, a popmythology.com podcast. One of the many ways in which the years 2020 and 2021 have been so horrendous has been the increasing level of destructiveness of the wildfires that have afflicted the West and Northwest regions of the United States. This increases the urgent need for people to understand how to prevent wildfires and also how to prepare for when they occur. Despite this, recent polls and studies show that far too many people are not prepared for hazards and disasters local to their regions. To help change this, the Oregon Office of Emergency Management and Dark Horse Comics have released a new comic book entitled Without Warning Wildfire. The comic is targeted towards children and teenagers, and it addresses what to do before and during a wildfire. To learn more about this project, I interviewed Dr. Althea Rizzo, who is the Geologic Hazards Program Coordinator at the Oregon Office of Emergency Management and who played a leading role in this comic and project. Okay, with me is Althea Rizzo, Program Coordinator for the Oregon Office of Emergency Management, or OEM for short. And she's here to talk to us about Without Warning Wildfire, the comic book. Welcome to the show, Althea. Hey, thank you for having me. Could you start by telling the audience a little bit about what you do with OEM and what your role in this comic book project has been? Sure. The program that I coordinate at the Oregon Office of Emergency Management is for geological hazards. So that's earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes. Sometimes I get landslides and sinkholes. <laughs> so it's when Oregon has its worst day ever for the Cascadia subduction zone. That's what my job is basically to help Oregon get prepared for. And how did this project as a whole first come about, this comic book? Basically, who approached whom and what was the initial ideal or proposal? Yeah, so one of the things that our office does is create and, and disseminate public outreach materials, educational materials for people to get prepared for emergencies, whether it's earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes, wildfires, floods, all kinds of things. And we had great material for adults and we had, we had some materials for littles. We had a coloring book and some other things, but we didn't really have anything for say middle school to young adult. You know, that age group doesn't tend to uh, want to pick up a how to get prepared manual and then use it. And the CDC had done a really well accepted zombie comic book. You know, when, when zombies were like all the rage, the CDC came up with this great comic book about zombie preparedness, because if you're ready for the zombie apocalypse, you really are prepared for anything that mother nature could throw at you, including zombies. So it kind of gave us the idea that maybe we would like to look at comic books. And when I started researching what comic companies were out there, you know, it kind of settled down. There's pretty much the big three. There's DC, Marvel, and there's Dark Horse. Um, there's a lot of independent ones. My husband used to work for Wildstorm Comics back in the 90s down in California. So comic books are a part of our lives. <laughs> and so when we were looking at doing a comic book, you know, we could go with, we looked at Marvel, we looked at DC. But there's, they were so big and Dark Horse is literally in our backyard. And we, we kind of liked the idea of keeping it here in Oregon. So our first one was the earthquake. We came out with the tsunami one, and and now we have the wildfire comic book. That is so interesting, everything you just said, uh, in a few different ways. I mean, I remember the CDC zombie comic book. I thought that was brilliant. And to hear this connection you have with just comics in general and your husband and Dark Horse, this is so cool. I'm going to have to bring you back on and talk about that kind of stuff as well. In the press release, you mentioned there's a quote of you stating that other public education publications have struggled to resonate with younger audiences. And you alluded to that earlier as well. Why do you think that's been the case? Well, kids learn differently than adults learn. Kids are interested in different things than the way adults are. Adults know that they sometimes need to sit down and learn a thing in order to you know, accomplish a goal. 
whether that's emergency preparedness or preparing for retirement or anything else. Kids, you have to keep their interest and you can't really preach at them. They smell BS really quickly and will clock out. And using comic books as our medium, it, it's something that kids know, they recognize. I, I remember in the before times when I would do tabling at uh, safety fairs and things like that, you know, the kids would just make a beeline to the comic books and we would be out of comic books within a few hours. And the kids would be walking around reading it and they'd come back and say how much they loved it. So it's, it's not a sock puppet teaching them how to be prepared. It's presenting them a hero's journey that they can put themselves into. And the character has this journey. They have to get from point A to point B in each one of the comic books. And along the way, they show that they've taken first aid. They show that they know what to do in the case of an emergency. They know how to recognize the signs of a tsunami so they can get to high ground quickly. Um, you know, and just the characters are exhibiting the behavior we want our kids to be able to accomplish in a bad day. So it's, it's really giving the kids kind of permission to be the hero so that if an opportunity comes up that they can take a first aid class, they're more than likely to take a first aid class because they've, it's kind of been put into their minds. I completely agree with that. Regarding the timing of this comic and its release, did the horrible, horrible wildfires of 2020 and 2021 have any influence on this project at all? Um, only in that we wanted to get it done as quickly as possible. The comic book was funded by the home, oh grass, the Hazard Mitigation Preparedness Grant Program. And it's a federal grant that we had put in a couple of years beforehand. And so uh, it was a slow start process. And by the time the fires come, we were well within the planning time of the, the comic book. So it was just coincidental timing. Gotcha. But, it, but it's a good product to have, in, you know, especially in the light of those horrific wildfires. And in addition to OEM and Dark Horse, there were other organizations who were involved in this project in some way. Clackamas Community College, the Oregon Department of Forestry, and Keep Oregon Green. How did so many organizations get to be involved? And can you give us a quick summary of what they contributed? Sure. So we had some great partnerships with the fire community in Oregon, which, you know, Oregon is a fairly small state. And so we all kind of know each other in this community. And we had a professor who teaches emergency management and fire safety at Clackamas County. We had uh, folks from Keep Oregon Green and also the Oregon Department of Forestry. And their role was really to make sure that I wasn't being incorrect in anything and making sure that uh, when I said that this behavior, you know, would be preventing foot wildfire, they, they were the ones that made sure that everything was correct in the comic book. And, and it was really providing the best information. So the comic does have a focus on the state of Oregon specifically and on the Northwest region in general. Why did you decide to have that focus? Is it simply a matter of the team members who were involved? And would you say that the information in the comic applies universally to other regions where there may be wildfires? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the great things that we found with especially the earthquake comic book is that other states wanted to do their own version of it. So uh, Idaho has put out a version of the Without Warning comic book with kind of their local contact information. The Central U.S. Earthquake Consortium, which is around Tennessee and Memphis and around the New Madrid Fault area, they adopted it and adapted it to their the New Madrid Fault back in the Midwest. And we were just approached from Okanagan up in Washington. They want to adopt this comic book. So when we create material at, at OEM, we're not thinking just in Oregon, you know, we're thinking how this message can be used more universally. That way, you know, the tax dollars that go into the development of that is is spread across the nation and, and we get more bang for our tax dollar buck. Indeed. You know, a single issue comic book is not a whole lot of space. So when it comes to all the various things that people can do to help prevent wildfires and also to prepare for when they occur, how did the project team decide which specific bits of information to include in this comic? 
Yeah, it is limited space in a comic book. So one thing that that we did was, you know, as the young characters were moving, they were going on their hike and then they had to come back because of the, the wildfire. They met a couple that were not displaying good fire safety. So in speaking to each other as they were hiking past them, you know, they said, oh, I hope they don't cause a wildfire because they don't have water by their fire but it's not separated from the grass. And so it's sort of sprinkled through. What we don't want to do is, you know, try to hit people over the head with an emergency preparedness message. The, the main thing is the story and the narrative with just these little peppered bits that kind of fly under the radar and, and just become a part of the story. So as I was reading this comic, and I hope it's okay to ask this question, but for me personally, I felt like there was kind of an elephant in the room. So I'm going to ask the question, but I also have a guess as to what the answer is going to be. So it's okay with you. As soon as I ask the question, I'm going to give you my guess as to what the answer is, and then you can either confirm it or correct me. Uh, how's that sound? Sounds great. Okay. So on this podcast, I talk a lot about climate change. And I think personally, the writings on the wall in terms of the ways that climate change is exacerbating the severity of certain kinds of both natural and man-made disasters, such as wildfires. Now, as I was reading, and I may have been projecting this, uh, but it seemed to me that there were a few subtle acknowledgments by the writer of climate change without actually naming it and without bringing attention to it. So that made me wonder what the reason might have been for not directly bringing attention to climate change, if that was indeed a conscious decision. So the question would be, why did the writer and why did the project team ask the writer to avoid mentioning climate change, which is the question. But now my guess is that you wanted to reach as wide an audience as possible. And given that this is a comic for kids and teenagers, it's quite likely that for some of them, at least, it's first going to pass through the filter of their parents. And climate change, even though it shouldn't be politicized, unfortunately it is. And so my guess is you avoided this topic because at the end of the day, regardless of people's politics, everyone needs to be prepared. And by leaving out climate change, you're increasing the chances of this book reaching more people, more kids. So am I close with this guess or way off the mark? You are 50% right. It's like that was half of the equation. The other half of the equation is we only have 12 pages to tell the story. And so when I tell you that each word was squeezed to within an inch of its life, I'm, I'm really being honest. We, we had to really pare the story down to just the basics and like you said it's it's kind of alluded to in a couple of places and kids that are already inoculated with thought of climate change will pick up on that whereas it was not enough to really trigger any emotional response in people who might have an emotional response to the subject of climate change I see. That makes sense. So it's really about prioritizing the most critical information for the purpose of this comic, which is to prepare children and teenagers and just people in general. Right, right. Give me a 48 page or a full length graphic novel. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now, let's imagine for a moment a 13 year old picks up this comic book, reads it and thinks, oh gosh, this is really important. I better prepare. My family better prepare. But I'm just a kid and I don't have the power in this family to make decisions. How can I talk about this with my parents in such a way that they'll get on board with this? So if a 13-year-old were to ask you that question, what would you say to them? I would say be the hero and bring it up with your parents. I, I think that it is probably a much easier topic than it might have been a number of years ago. There's more information out there. There's more evidence that we need wildfire safety. You know, this, these last fires have just really opened up the eyes of Oregonians, really. We'd had fires before, but we had never had fires literally coming through towns on the I-5 corridor, you know, threatening one of our largest cities in the, in the, in the state. So I think that that 13 or 14 year old can arm themselves by following some of those links in the comic book so that they have the information and then, you know, bring it up at the dinner table. All preparedness for a family starts with a conversation at some point. 
And it's that first conversation that's really the most important. It's just acknowledging the fact that we have hazards and that we can do things to get prepared for hazards and then taking the steps to do the thing to get prepared for hazards. And the comic does go through some of those steps that people can read about, hopefully, when they get the comic. When I was finished reading it, it seemed to me that there were three broad overarching components of what people should do with regards to preparation. And I thought I'd try summarizing them. And you, as a teacher in this situation, could tell if I, the student, did a good job with my homework. So... First, there's the education and awareness component in which you learn about things like how easy it is for wildfires to get started and the ways you can help prevent them, such as practicing caution when it comes to things like campfires, fireworks, and whatnot. Next is the preparation component in which you do things like putting together an emergency kit or discussing evacuation plans with your family in advance. And finally, Despite all this, if a wildfire were to occur, then there's the actual evacuation component and going about the evacuation in a way that helps ensure the safety of yourself and your family. And that includes your pets and animals and also the safety of other people. So broadly speaking, would you say that's correct or accurate? Yeah, yeah, you got it right there. So will there be more comics for this series in the future? You mentioned the earthquake, the tsunami, and now we have the wildfire. Will there be more? Uh, if I could find the funding, I am happy to continue producing these. You know, the first one, the earthquake one was funded by uh, the National Earthquake Hazard Reduction Program. The tsunami comic book was funded by the National Tsunami Hazard Mitigation Program. This one was funded by another federal grant. So if I could find the funding, I'm happy to do a volcano one. We can do a flood. We can do an ice storm. There's a lot of hazards that we can do comic books for. And I would really love to continue working with Dark Horse. They're, they've been an amazing partner in this. Well, speaking of that, I, I would imagine that getting a good response for the series would help ensure future funding. So tell us, what kind of response have you gotten so far with the series as a whole? And maybe if you've already gotten some feedback for this wildfire comic. I know that when I'm doing, you know, a public outreach table at like the county fair, the comic books are the first ones to go of all my publications. <laughs> and, you know, you see kids walking away reading it. And, you know, I've had kids come back to the table and pick up more copies for their friends because they want their friends to read it because they liked it so much. You know, it's, it's a simple story for each one. We're not trying to create this superhero world, but I think that it really does resonate with the kids. And it's nice to have a positive story to share with people. What can those of us who think that this is really important to help spread awareness and preparation among people, what can we do to help make this comic more successful or get in the hands of more kids? Just continue to share it. And, you know, one of the most important things about getting ready for natural hazards is talking about it. And so I like to challenge people to do something today before they go to bed so that they're more prepared tomorrow than they were when they woke up this morning. You know, it could be having a conversation with your family at dinner tonight. It could be checking the flashlight batteries. It could be putting some old shoes by the bed. So if happening, something happens in the middle of the night and you got old shoes there, you know, if you, and none of those things cost any money. Preparedness does not have to be expensive. But when we have a publication like this, you know, sharing it with social media, sharing it with your friends and family, you know, groups like yourself, sharing the information has been great talking to you. You know, we're all in this in basket together. Lastly, are there any website links or social media accounts you would like to direct listeners towards? Yeah. So the comic book is available on Dark Horse Digital. It is available in Comixology, in Amazon, and the Oregon Office of Emergency Management. All of those places have it available. Um, it's available in English and in Spanish. And we're really excited to be able to have people read it, you know, go download it so our numbers are up. <laughs> so there are both digital and hard copies available. Is that correct? There are digital and hard copies of the earthquake and tsunami. We don't have hard copies of the wildfire yet, but we will eventually. 
Okay. And when those eventually come out, will they be available in local comic book shops? No, uh, folks in Oregon can contact their local county emergency managers to get copies of it. Sometimes we have schools reach out. You can have your school contact us, and we're happy to provide schools with copies of it. That's probably the easiest way to do it is if you have a school, have the school request it, and we'll send out copies uh, for the school. Definitely want to stress that they're free, so people should definitely pick those up. And lastly, you're a very interesting person. What if people want to find you on the internet? Do you have any social media accounts or anything like that, website? Um, I'm on Twitter as Althea Rizzo. I, I don't post a lot. I do have social, but I can get kind of uh, mouthy. <laughs> I, I have opinions and I do oftentimes share them on my Facebook, but I am on Twitter under Althea Rizzo. Okay, very good. Althea Rizzo, thank you very much for taking the time to be on the show and talk to us today about this wonderful and important comic book. Thank you so much for the opportunity to chat with you and your audience. That was our interview with Dr. Althea Rizzo. Once again, as a reminder, Without Warning, Wildfire is available to read for free at Dark Horse Digital, the website for the Oregon Office of Emergency Management, which I'll link to in the show notes, and on iOS and Android apps. It's also available on Kindle, Comixology, Google Play, and Apple Books. The first two comics in the series, Without Warning Earthquake and Without Warning Tsunami, are available online from the same sources as well. That's all for this episode. Thanks for listening. Until next time, I'm your host, the pop mythologist, and this is the end, or let us hope that this is the end, of not being prepared for wildfires, earthquakes, tsunamis, and other hazards and disasters. So let's all try to do our part to help spread awareness so that people can be prepared, ready, and resilient. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Please subscribe, and if you're willing, share one of these episodes on social media. If you're sharing on Twitter, Go ahead and tag us at the end underscore podcast or at pop mythology, and I'll be sure to retweet you. And if your chosen podcast platform allows reviews like Apple Podcasts, I invite you to leave a review as well. Thank you.